You can listen to The Professional Left on iTunes, Stitcher Radio, or at our website, proleftpod.com, where you can also contribute to this podcast. There's a PayPal button at our website, or you can mail us a letter and or contribution at P.O. Box 9133, Springfield, Illinois, 62791. This is the podcast for March 1st, 2019. It's not safe for work. Recorded live from the Cornfield Resistance, where we know where our boxes are, it's The Professional Left with Drift Glass and Blue Gal. cats in them all the boxes yeah they're all scented they're all cat marked they're all cataloged by various other words that you can rhyme with cat so in case any republican shows up at our door wanting to know uh where our boxes are why we haven't turned our boxes over and we belabor the point that we turn them over you, these are the same boxes you looked at last week and they don't seem to understand that uh they're all they're all here they're all right here and parked ready to go and in case that republican needs to show up at our door with, say, a special black friend to enhance their credibility as a not racist person. <laughs> this week, we're being brought to you by a new state-of-the-art emergency racism immunity app that's taken the GOP by storm. It's called My Special Black Friend. It combines the compatibility algorithm of Silver Singles and the Uber peer-to-peer ride-sharing technology. This is a powerful new app that's perfect for the on-the-go Republican who suddenly needs to deflect charges of racism. So whether you're a Republican glad handing your way through the Beltway cocktail circuit or a Republican trying to save Donald Trump's ass in front of national television, my special black friend is the just-in-time racism immunity app just for you. Somehow I think that app isn't working the way it was intended. No, I think it's kind of an old technology. This is like a DOS-based 90s technology <laughs> when you can still have Michael Steele you know, running the party in the, the Barack Obama era going, see, see, we're not racist. Look at Michael Steele. Come on, people. You know we're not racist. We've got Michael Steele out front. And there were still four people in America who go, you know what? That's a valid argument. I take that. I take them at their words. This is an honest group of people. Uh, but they're kind of screwed now. They, there's Every time they try to do this, it seems they get worse at it. And then the next day or two hours from then, someone goes on a live mic and says something about, oh, I don't know, sending Barack Obama back to Kenya. And then we're back to square one. But it's, here's it's the thing. It's unbelievable. If, if racism is your party's single defining characteristic, which it is. <laughs> yeah. Lean into it. Take, you know, go embrace your inner clansman, man. Be that guy. And because you, you get tripped up by pretending you're not. This is where Republicans always fall down on the job. They keep pretending the thing they're not, even though they're very, very proud of it in private. And those private little conversations you have between you and your racist base keep leaking out and making you look stupid. So wouldn't you rather appear to be a, a marginally intelligent racist than a complete brain dead dumbass because those are really the two choices left if you're a republican you're either a complete fucking idiot or you're a racist so pick one pick whatever one works for you louis gomert there's your special exception right there you can be both but you know <laughs> but you know never go full gomert that's our our rule right across the board you never want to go full gomert but as a republican pick one just pick one and lean into it and just see what happens uh, one day you could be president of the united states or maybe a week later you might be in federal prison we don't know we're just a cornfield resistance group of liberals out here who observe the world and tell you what's going on in it. And one thing that I observed yesterday is that the women of color who were Democrats on the House yeah. Oversight Committee yeah. really did focus on behavior rather than yes. personality. And yes, they did. his behavior and holding up and actually just having uh, one commentator said, uh, Eddie Globe said she was Black Venus. That yeah. he, it was just, we're going to hold her up on this sh half shell, you know, mm -hmm. as, as a token, as a literal token of yes. here is proof that Donald Trump is not racist as an emblem. She was not a human mm -hmm. being. She was no. an emblem of right. Donald Trump's not rate, totally not racist. And the women on that committee focused on two things. They focused on the behavior of that and their feelings about it. And yes. you cannot debate someone's feelings about mm -hmm. what had happened. Uh, that, and I, I applaud them for that. Uh, I don't want to undo that or make a bet be a bad example here. I just want to take note that um, CPAC is happening right now. Yeah, boy, and, uh, oh my, perfect uh, timing. 
uh, Matt Schlapp is discussing criminal justice reform with Van Jones. Yeah. <laughs> so no, com- leave no that right further there. comment. No further comment necessary. Yeah. <laughs> really, that's sitting right there because there's a there's a whole universe of back scratching and log rolling and winking and nudging and special understandings between people that land people like that with jobs for life. That right. this is why Rick Santorum can just go on television and say, in Trump's defense, he lies all the time. <laughs> and uh, and so what are you going to do? I mean, you know, but he's a good Christian person. And, you know, he's not just hauled off on a net. Uh, he's just given a paycheck and asked to come back. Um, and, and so there is a, you have to understand most of what you see most of the time in the news is a rigged puppet show. Yeah. Put on for some reason that amuses some people. Uh, you know, Bill Crystal is now launching his new, has already launched his new media company, his former editor this week, today, I believe, and um, Jonah Doey Pantload uh, Goldberg. Yeah. From the National Review, who's uh, my, my, fa- my favorite pull quote from him is telling the Katrina survivors they should grow gills. Oh, wow. That, always, that one always stuck with me. Uh, and who has blocked me on the Twitter for pointing out that he and his friends are despicable mm-hmm. uh, lowlifes, um, are launching their own media company. Their own. This is all center-right Trump skeptical media territory. And looking for and, investors. Yes, they are. They're <laughs> very much looking for investors. But I, I pulled something from the this Crooks and Liars site all the kids are talking about. Oh, yeah. Um, from just a few years ago with Rachel Maddow just crucifying Bill Crystal as being the wrongest man in America. The Bill Crystal is a punchline. He's a joke. He's a farce. Mm-hmm. What sort of idiot would put Bill Crystal on the fucking television set? Oh, yeah, it's MSNBC who does that now. So even your most trusted source for news, I don't think Rachel Maddow will ever have Bill Crystal on. Right. But the company she works for sure as shit will. And, and she is expected to sit on her hands and not say anything because she is not in charge of the business side of the business. The business side of the business decides that Bill Crystal should have a job for life and Charlie Sykes should have a job for life and Rick Wilson should be on every day and that David Brooks should be uh, out there somewhere doing his David Brooks thing. And all of these things are are understood inside the boardroom and the people you see in the media have clearly, it's been made clear to them that they're not supposed to fucking talk about it. Mm-hmm. We're allowed to because we're liberals. We don't matter. We're just out in the cornfield causing trouble, living our lives, well, but living Jeff, the I, dream. Jeff, I want to talk about that for a minute, about sitting out oh, in the cornfield and seeing things like we're going to get into right away the Michael Cohen testimony. Yes. Yes, we are. And- Days like yesterday, and we are recording on Thursday because we have kids to tote around on Friday again. (laughs) All Uh, over the state. All over the place. Yep. Oh, two states. Actually, we got to cross the state line. Yeah, we've got to go pick up someone at the St. Louis airport. So we're going to go do that Friday afternoon. Anyway, uh, the, the times when it appears as though... Trump and the Republicans are going to get their one up and that at least at least we will move the needle a little bit in our direction towards mm-hmm. justice for criminals. <laughs> right. Real, right. real criminal justice. Sorry, Van Jones. We're going to talk about yeah. that kind of criminal justice at the moment. And there is such a, I feel as though we've been gaslit so many times by this president and uh, that the media doesn't uh, hold on to what is really happening for more than five seconds. It's like a putting your hand on a hot stove. It just, oh no, we got to move on to the next thing. There's always breaking news. There's always something else, some other shiny object instead of, no, the president of the United States is a Russian asset and a criminal. Yes, period. And we can't seem to hold on to that fact long enough to do anything about it. And his party loves him for it. The Republican Party's corruption is holding him up. Yeah. And so when a day like yesterday happens where it appears as though we're finally going to get some actual truth on the television, uh-huh. I almost want to crawl into bed and hide under the covers. Yeah. Not, yeah. not because I don't want the truth to come out, but because I know I'm going to be disappointed by the result. 
And I don't know how to break out of that except to work to elect more Democrats to office. I mean, that's there's really we have to flip the Senate. We have to. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm glad to see a lot of people noticing, look, Donald Trump might get reelected to the presidency. That's that's a real possibility. It really is. And with with the help of uh, the moderates, he just might do it. Yeah. I don't want to be a downer. I want to provide hope for our listeners and a vocabulary and all those good things. But I, I almost am afraid of news cycles that look like they're going to go to our benefit. We got a letter from a, a listener who was angry with mm-hmm. us for mentioning the 25th Amendment. Oh, yeah. And yeah. I, well, and I thank him for that yeah. because I do I, – I agree with him now that we've had some time to think about yeah. this, that – it's clear that it's for total incapacitation of the yeah, presidency. And, you know, that's what it's for. And even if it were just for like, if 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 it's for running a meth lab out of the out of the Oval Office openly and then yeah. selling it to children yeah. on the White House lawn, the Republican Congress and the Republican cabinet are not going to do a fucking thing about it. It doesn't matter what mm-hmm. Donald. It literally doesn't matter what Donald Trump does. They're going to take no action at all. So there's no chance in the universe that Donald Trump is going to be removed from office, the 25th Amendment. There's very little chance he's going to be removed through impeachment. This kind of silver bullet is going to come and save us. I mean that, of course, metaphorically, uh, is not the way to look at this. This is this. We are we are as a nation now paying dearly for our sins. Um, And I got to toss this back to you and ask you if you want to talk about Casey Hunt. Yesterday, yes, I do. Making yes, a, I do. Yeah. Because there was this bubble on Meet the Press Daily this, of all places. This moment. Perfect moment. Where, you know, she's doing exactly what her job is, which is running around Capitol Hill with a microphone uh, from one press scrum to another uh, to get the questions asked and get, get answers from powerful people. And uh, so she had extra time this yeah. <laughs> this particular moment. Because Michael Cohen was supposed to do a press conference and just gave a statement and took no questions. And then Elijah Cummings also did the same thing, made a brief statement and left. And so time they had reserved for questions didn't wasn't used. And so she had time to just chat for a minute with Chuck Todd. Well, danger, she, danger, 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 danger. Well, being in that hearing room and absorbing this all day long, mm-hmm. absorbing what Michael Cohen said and realizing how indefensible what Donald Trump did is that the Republicans can scream and yell. And you said on your blog, you know, make many loud noises. Yeah. It was very much uh, the character Brick, on um, Brick Tamlin. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Brick many loud noises. From Anchorman. You know, this from Anchorman. Yes. Yeah. Make loud noises. Yeah, that's all they could do. Uh, and that was not defending Trump. No one said, he's allowed to fuck a porn star while his wife is recovering from childbirth and then use hush money to pay her off no. before the election. That, no problem. That's, they that's the job of the of Republicans on Twitter, to make yeah. that <laughs> argument. <laughs> you know. Well, a lot of people, a lot of Republicans on Twitter, I went looking for them, said, we don't care what he did 10 years ago with Stormy Daniels. And there were many people replying, you know, it's a good thing the law doesn't care what you think. Right. That's the point. Hush money. The hush money to influence an election is illegal. And the last and payoff of which he was made while he was in office. Office. While he was an ongoing, about an ongoing criminal conspiracy. Yeah that he lied about while he was in office, which makes yep. it a crime and a crime and a crime and something which this no longer bears repeating. Republicans would have burned the White House to the ground if any yep. Democrat had done anything like this. Yep. So, but anyways. And as, they would have been right to burn the house down yeah. if anything like this happened. Yeah. You don't pay hush money to porn stars that you fucked during an election cycle to win an election. You don't, that's just illegal. It says so right in the, I forget which amendment that is, but it's very clearly <laughs> spelled out in one of the posts. We're going to have an amendment that, yeah. uh, along those lines. Right after the feeling. Volstead Act was repealed, I believe they put oh, in that, that part about gosh. fucking a porn star. Anyway, you were saying uh, Casey Hunt. It, so Casey Hunt mentioned this to Chuck Todd and said, you know, he, he paid hush money to a porn star who he had sex with to influence an election. I don't see how we got, how did we lose sight of that? Mm-hmm. Well, it's easy how they lost sight of it. it. They lost like, sight of it because of ratings, yeah. because of the constant 
a news cycle that requires breaking news every five minutes and because both sides. Yeah. Well, that's and the thing. That is exactly Even the when both sides is absolutely contrary to the truth, you have to say both sides. Right. And so it was delicious that of all people, she was musing this to Chuck Dodd. Mm-hmm. How did this body ever get buried in my backyard? Yeah. Don't yeah. there's pictures of you with a shovel. There's pictures of yeah. you putting the body in the ground. That's how it got there. Like it, it is this kind of this mindless childlike innocence coupled with complete corruption that we genuinely have no idea why the news media, which is us, keeps forgetting the important parts of the story, even though our boss tells us to. And every now and then, again, there's this there's a moment where they just sort of like trip over themselves and go, you know. This is really fucked up. I wonder how this happened. And their hands are covered with blood. And yeah. that's when we go, what else is there to say? What Capture this moment. Hold them in this moment. Of course, you can't hold them in that moment because the next thing comes along and the next thing is worse than the last. And it's always coming from the right and it's always disaster. And that's why you have Hugh Hewitt to roll out <laughs> to say, yeah. well, you know, uh, Hillary Clinton. And, and then we're off to the races. That's why you have Republicans um, at the... You know, the Benghazi, Benghazi, Benghazi Republicans freaking out over actual oversight being done for the first time in the House in two years. They don't know what it looks like anymore. That This is completely yeah. alien to them. Their yeah. job, as they know it, is to protect the criminal that they helped put in the White House and who holds all of their balls in a bag because he owns the base. Their job is to die on this hill. And that Lindsey Graham is no clearer example of someone who is completely sold out there's there's nothing decent left in that big fucking empty suit there's, well, there's nothing, nothing left to say there is, i want to i want to disagree with you there for a minute because it's uh-huh. not just protecting trump no. it is the idea that justice is simply something to serve our partisan goals right so yes. whether it's putting hillary on trial on benghazi 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 or uh defending trump against actual criminal charges doesn't matter the whole point of any exercise of either defending or prosecuting has to go toward the goal of supporting the republican party uh that doesn't stand for anything but tax cuts for billionaires can can i work in a a brief plug for boardwalk empire oh okay (laughs) it's the it's the it's the idealism of the women's christian temperance union yeah, slamming yeah. up against the absolute abject, kill anyone who's in my way, buy anyone off that I have to, corruption of organized crime. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you know, the, the, the you keep going to the cops, expecting them to do something. You find the cops are on the payroll. Yeah, and and the people on the criminal side of that enterprise, which by and large is the Republican Party, it's just in their blood that the whole system is here for to be looted. Mm-hmm. Our job is to rip these fucking idiots off who put us in office. And burn the place down so so that our benefactors don't have to pay taxes because government's evil. That's l- literally their only mandate. And so they keep getting confused when they see law happening. And Democrats, to, to their eternal shame, keep not being able to figure out why they can't shame these criminals into behaving well. Yeah. Well, because yeah. they're criminals. Because they're corrupt scumbags. And you're never going to reach them by allying with them and compromising. with. This is the whole Obama administration. Barack Obama wasted years. Bill Clinton, frankly, also wasted years trying to find a way to compromise with people who told them to their face that I'm here to put a knife through your chest and fuck your corpse and piss on your grave. And it's like, no, you couldn't possibly really mean that. That's just a political. No, they really meant it. And they've only gotten worse. So the idea that you're going to find some scrap, some spark of conscience that you can appeal to on the right is simply not true. They are the existential threat to this country, period. And the question is, how fast can we take the Senate back and start prying these people out of power? And yep. I, 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 like you, I'm worried. I'm worried about the moderates, frankly. I'm worried about these. I'm worried about the people in the center, uh, which brings us back to David Brooks, if you'd like. Well, I just want to throw one little bomb on your argument. And that Please is do. that uh, a very smart lady by the name of Nancy Pelosi. Yes, found a yes. couple of Republicans who were willing to vote to close the gun loophole uh-huh. so that she could call her close the gun loophole bill, Bi- the bipartisan Bi- close the gun sure. loophole bill. Mm-hmm. And that word does 
wave a magic wand magic. over people. That's right. That's so true. Well, she, it, she was able to, and, and all you have to do, I mean, this is something that Republicans have done all along, right? Mm -hmm. Is found some Joe Manchin or somebody to uh, go along with whatever they want to do and call it bipartisan. So right. we can play that game too. Anyway. Uh, I was going to go, uh, what do you want to talk about next? I was going to talk about David Brooks going back to David Brooks Inc. <laughs> or we should talk about we should talk about the Methodist Church probably. Well, we will, but you go ahead and talk about David Brooks first. That'll dovetail nicely into uh, the strange political bedfellows that were forming yeah. over the medical over well, the Methodist Church. I have made it a a sort of hobby of mine while I was in Twitter prison. Uh, <laughs> I made it. I went to the, tw the Twitter prison library every day and did did a lot of reading. Anyway, I've been catching up on on our, our Never Trump friends and trying to keep a list of who's in and who's out. I'm thinking of starting my own blog that does like a daily box score, whether someone's not a never Trumper is. And the, the thing is, oh, they call Trump an asshole. If they call him an asshole, then he's my friend. And I have to trust everything he does uh, until, of course, the next election's over. And, and then we're going to dump them, which is a great way of making lasting friendships. I only care about you until I can dump you. No, because they're doing the same thing. So um, I have been watching pretty carefully and right almost exactly every single never Trumper, Liz Mayer, uh, I listened to the Matt Lewis on the News podcast with special guest John Ziegler, which I'm going to write about this week because it was a special kind of train wreck. It was every kind of checklist, every kind of every kind of liberal. Uh, it, Matt Lewis was going on about how he feels relieved and delighted he can go back to bashing liberals because now they're a bunch of socialist Marxists, you know, revealed as as who they really are. Um, but right across the board, they're they're saying all of the ones I've checked in on have said unless. Democrats nominate a moderate unless they nominate yeah. Joe Biden. I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to, I'll vote for someone else. I'll vote for Donald Trump. I'll vote for someone, but I'm not going to vote for the Democrats if they, if they, and this is, this is again, dictating terms, the losers, the people who are, who got run out of the Republican party on a rail and who we have allowed, not me, but credulous liberals have allowed to sleep on their couch and, and rest themselves. And, and fatten their wallets and regain their media voice are now turning around saying, oh, by the way, unless you nominate who I want the Democrats to nominate, me and my little band of never Trumpers are going to bring the whole house down because mm -hmm. the next election is going to be decided by nine votes, apparently. And we'll take all nine of our moderate votes and throw them away. So Trump will be reelected. And this week, I thought David Brooks is finally done with being the both siders stooge that oh, he is. Oh no! <laughs> I thought he'd finally found his calling as as America's religion and community calendar reporter, going from church basement to church, church basement across the country, <clears throat> talking about humility and modesty, and how we need to re-net the social fabric, and just essentially ignoring everything going on in politics at the national level that he helped create. And now that the house is fully on fire and it's all falling apart and everything is shit, David Brooks has decided his best course of action is to hide out in the church basement and talk about casseroles yeah. and bowling and community in advance of the book he will uh, be revealing in a couple of months. And then he's off from his lazy job at the New York Times to do another book tour and put another couple of hundred million dollars in his pocket. So that's David Brooks. I was wrong. Because <laughs> this week uh, he published boldly and for like the... 15th time in 20 years his bold agenda for moderates in the new york times and it was the same kind of dull repetitive pairing of left and right left and right left and right that he does he's been doing for 15 years he literally has one fucking column and it's the left and the right and the left and the right now offer two different things the trumpian right offers this the left offers that the left wing and the right wing i'm literally quoting from his thing they both are based on scarcity mindsets they're both are based on this. They both are based on that. And then he comes to the point in the column, which I call the razor and the apple. If the 2020 choice is between Donald Trump and a Democrat who supports the Green New Deal, I'd vote for any moderate alternative. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's David Brooks saying, I will fuck you up unless you nominate the candidate I choose. Because he gets because to David pick Brooks the Democratic nominee for president, apparently. Well, David Brooks is so used to being courted yeah. by centrist Democrats. Yep. He's so used to having Barack Obama's ear. Uh, he had more private chats with Barack Obama than you and I will ever have with any president ever. Yeah. And it, it got Obama nothing. It earned him nothing. It, Obama way too late figured out, oh, it's, it's a scam. Yeah. 
These, this, this is basically a couple of hundred assholes who are rich beltway, a cell a quarter douches. They re, they speak for nobody. This is not the Republican Party. The Republican Party is are those racist people who keep calling me a Kenyan usurper. That's the Republican Party. I'm courting these idiots for nothing. Too late, turned out, but that's the way it goes. But David Brooks is still essentially demanding to be relevant again. And he and, and he and pretty much every other never Trumper is staking out a territory saying, if you don't fucking nominate someone I think is acceptable from my point of view, from my lifelong conservative someone point of view. Someone who will not hurt my pharma stocks. Exactly. That's what we're talking their, about. Yeah. Their idea of utopia is rolling the Republican Party back to 2005. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I remember what the Republican Party was like in 2005. And the party in 2005 is what got us here. Right. So these people are not your friends. They do not have your best interests at heart. And there's only a couple of hundred of them as far as I can tell. So anyway. I have an interesting statistic for you, Drift Glass. Before we get into talking statistics. about the United Methodist Church, Crooks and Liars subscribes to a service where we can clip videos from TV. It also yeah. That service also allows us to track terms that are used in the news. So for instance, I track the word Trumpism. And I've been tracking that word for a long time. It it yeah. has boiled down to Trumpism is now used pretty much uh, to talk about Trump's foreign policy, quote unquote, la- or lack thereof. Mm-hmm. Uh, I track the word white men because I'm interested in finding out when people are talking about white men as a voting block. But one uh, one of the things that I track, and I do this because you have taught me to do this, your class. <laughs> I track the term in quotation marks, but the Democrats. Uh And I think I've said this to you before on the podcast, even that uh, the place I find, but the Democrats over and over and over again is call in AM radio shows. Yes. People who call in to talk to Rush or talk to some local right wing host will say, but the Democrats, you know, they're a bunch of socialists or they're and, and denigrate people by saying, but the Democrats. But mainstream media uses but the Democrats a lot. And Constantly. you have a joke about Cokie Roberts from way back. Oh, uh, Dick Cheney. Dick Cheney. That yeah. Dick Cheney is throwing flaming kittens at homeless veterans on the White House lawn. And right. the first three words out of Cokie Roberts' mouth are but the Democrats. Yes. From 2005, I believe. What I have found about the words, but the Democrats, is that it is a remarkable gauge for when Donald Trump is having a bad day. Yes. So on Monday, there were 39 references to but the Democrats. On Tuesday, there were 74 references. And on Wednesday, the day that Michael Cohen gave his testimony, there were 318 references on on mass media Mm -hmm. to but the Democrats. It mm-hmm. is a sure sign that something is up in Trump world that's bad, that the both siders are going to come right out of the woodwork and start talking about. But the Democrats did something different. So, well, and that pairs perfectly because this is a two stroke engine. Mm-hmm. This, this has mm-hmm. two parts mm-hmm. to it. First of all, Democrats are always just as bad. Yep. They always get something imaginary in the, in the minds of crazy Uncle Liberty that's as bad or worse that makes whatever the hell happens today perfectly justifiable in their relative. And you can you can go down this rabbit hole a million times, and I have with my own personal crazy uncle liberties. It doesn't matter. You can de- you can debunk them all day long, and tomorrow they'll come back with a hundred new lies. And you can debunk all those; they'll come back with more. They're not salvageable. Stop arguing with them. They're fucking robots. Uh, but the second half of that is the, among the intelligentsia, among the serious conservatives, among the moderate conservatives, the center rights, if you will, who are all launching their own media companies. When did conservatism go bad? It's very important to people who've spent their entire life shitting on liberals and making the Republican Party into a machine that could produce Trump to lie about their own history. And it's really important that they get liberals, credulous liberals, to let them get away with it. It's very important that they they lie about this. So today, uh, as CPAC is dawning, Bill Kristol is on Twitter going, conservatives have spent over half a century disproving the claim that we are the stupid party. Now, under Trump, conservatism is embracing, indeed reveling, in stupidity. That's yeah. Bill Crystal today because it, it happened 
the minute Donald Trump was elected. Yep, it went down the escalator, right. right. Before that, everything was fine. And after that, everything went to shit. And that's the, and this is the same party that refused to remember the Bush administration during the Obama administration, that refused to remember the, refused to remember Clinton during the Bush administration. They constantly reset the moment in history when things went wrong, beyond which you're not allowed to speak. And we we uh, codified this with your Iron Rule of David Brooks. Yep. yep. It is mandatory to quote David Brooks today. It's forbidden to quote what David Brooks said yesterday because what he said yesterday is always turns out to be wrong. Right. And if you have five minutes in an elevator with any member of the New York Times management, you can tell them that. And maybe if you can tell them from me, ask them from me, why the fuck does this clown still have a job? Yeah. And the answer is going to be, son, you don't understand the business we're in. <laughs> <laughs> and that'll be the last you'll ever hear from that person. But they're not in the news business. They're in the appeasing rich asshole business. Yep. And no rich asshole wants to believe that they were complicit in creating Donald Trump the last 30 years or, they want to be told harming democracy to the extent right. that the republican party has done so for 30 years right and right. they want to be told that democrats are just as bad or worse than whatever you see in any headline today and that they have nothing to do with the republican party being a shit pile of bigots and imbeciles that's what they that's the message that they want to hear and they're going to buy or build or rent or borrow any media because they have an infinite amount of money who will tell them the lies they want to hear and that's where we stand with the media. We need to talk about the United Methodist Church, dear class, because you yes, and we I do, which segues are members. really nicely, actually. We're, member, we're members of the United Methodist Church. We are. A local United Methodist Church here in Springfield. And we, we're uh, actually very active at that we're church. Active at if that you want church. to know the truth. And uh, mm-hmm. some very sad news came out uh, from the general conference, our annual general conference, which was held in St. Louis. Uh, we did not mm-hmm. go to this, but. It was held last weekend or early last week. And uh, basically our uh, feelings and our uh, support for marriage equality and pastoral uh, equality in terms of uh, sexual identity uh, were Mm -hmm. pushed out of the church. Right. And uh, that's what happened. Don't, Don't believe stories that say the church is breaking up one side was pushed out by the other side. Yes. Uh, yes and does. the side that was pushed out of the church was uh, in support of gay rights and LGBTQ uh, inclusion. inclusion in both uh, the church in terms of marriage and the church in terms of pastoral duties. So mm-hmm. uh, we're going to have to wait and see what happens. Our local church is... Uh, for the most part, I mean, I'm sure there are a couple of members who are, you know, don't like the gays. I'm sure they're there. I don't know them. But overall, everyone that I've talked to who I hang out with at church, including people in an official capacity, are very mm-hmm. supportive of gay rights and marriage equality and all of those things. And mm-hmm. so our local church, along with Dozens and dozens and dozens, perhaps hundreds of local denominations are going to have to take the steps of separating from separating officially. We've been kicked out. I want I I really want to make sure people realize that there were three options on the table. Two, Two of the options were set up to keep the church together and none of them made everyone happy but they were giving individual churches choice to uh, ordain gay ministers and hold gay marriages if that did not, if that individual church chose to do so. That was one of the options. Right. Uh, right. What we have is, uh, a, like I said, a large number of churches that want to ordain ministers regardless of sexual orientation and want to hold weddings regardless of the gender of the couple. And... Mm-hmm. Uh, those churches um, are going to not be part of the United Methodist congregation anymore. Right. Uh, the other groups are primarily what one, what one columnist called Southern Baptist with the United Methodist name mm-hmm. and African churches. And uh, those two right. groups. These are not AME churches. No, African these Methodist. are, these these are, are literal churches, churches in United, Africa. United Methodist churches in Africa. Mm-hmm. One of the reasons that 
it was going to be left up in in plan A and B to the individual churches and the individual denominations was no one within our group of churches wanted to force a church that is in a Muslim country or has a di dictator or has some sort of uh, law against homosexual activity. We were not asking pastors or church members to go to prison in order to, to risk be their United, lives. right, yeah. or to risk their lives in order to be a United Methodist. So right. that was that was being considered. Um, but mm -hmm. the the African church members were uh, who attended United the United Methodist General Conference were adamant that they were being lectured to by by white North American churches that they absolutely felt that this was biblically based and a United Methodist tenant. Um, and uh, Adam Hamilton, who is a United Methodist author and pastor here, gave a very good speech about, uh, you realize you guys are forcing us out of the church um, right. by saying, no, this is Bible based and we are, going to insist on heterosexual priests and heterosexual weddings because that's what the Bible tells us to do. Um, and he pointed out that at this particular conference, they reaffirmed their support for female pastors, which Paul right. says, you know, and you can interpret it lots of different ways. You can always interpret Paul lots of different ways, but Paul did say women keep silence in the church. So, and, right. and that has been used to support the all-male priesthood in the Catholic Church. So they set that aside and said, no, we interpret that differently and we're going to go along with women pastors. They also spent mm -hmm. a lot of time uh, preserving and uh, ensuring their pensions <laughs> for, yeah. the, for pastors and bishops. And, uh, what does it say about pensions in the Bible, What honey? does it say about laying up riches for the future and and? Oh, that's right. Riches. You're not supposed to do that. <laughs> Your, your wrists are in heaven, right, not on earth, right. guys. Come on. Why don't, give why, up don't your you, why don't we pay off the church's debts and, and get everything squared away and not worry about such things, the laying up stores for the future? Well, mm -hmm. you know, that's we're, we're willing to, to uh, whack people we disagree with upside the head with a Bible when it's uh, convenient for us, but don't touch our right. pensions. So. And like, let's face it, like most other right, religions. Right, right. I mean, I'm not yeah. I'm not screaming that we're more hypocritical than other people. I'm just saying no. this is an example of hypocrisy. And so But it's also uh, it's it was also a good example of what happens when one side this is sort of bringing it back to politics, mm -hmm. when one side simply refuses to compromise right. at right. all. Period. This is our stat and we will shut this thing down. We will let this fucker right. burn. Unless we get our, our way 100%, right. period. Well, and, and, and there were people on our side of things, the LGBT mm -hmm. community, who, to their credit as well, said, look, there is no point in having this compromise. But for now, if this was how it was going to be, uh, mm -hmm. it was much better to let individual churches make the decision than to say the entire United Methodist Church will stand for heterosexual priests and heterosexual weddings only. And that was right. what passed by a narrow margin. Mm -hmm. uh, and so we were kicked out. And it's not clear what's going to happen with individual churches and their property. You know, does the property belong to the grand United Methodist over overarching umbrella? Does it belong to the individual churches? There were some votes on that. I'm not quite sure how everything worked out with that. I'm sure there's going to be some lawsuits regarding the property. And mm -hmm. uh, there is now a very interesting uh, group of bedfellows. Uh, on, on, and I hate to say on both sides on this podcast. <laughs> no, but in this case, it's, it's quite um, true. But Southern mm -hmm. Baptist, has, as like I said, this is a phrase of art, the Southern Baptist United Methodist, because... They're Southern and they're white and they want the Bible to be interpreted as anti-gay. Right. And the African church are together for now. And on the left side of the argument, uh, there are white liberal churches. And also today, the North Carolina and AACP came out in favor of the LGBTQ United Methodist organizing principles. 
-hmm. So uh, there's just a lot of, and, and you have mentioned this before that, you know, you've, you attended a black church for many years in Chicago, you know, uh, people who are old pastors of AME churches who uh, made it uh, abundantly clear that anytime you touched a man, it was a masculine hug. It was a masculine, right. you know, that, that uh, there's no uh, gay pretext ever <laughs> coming from no. the pulpit. And no. uh, so, and now we are seeing, and, and since Barack Obama endorsed uh, gay marriage yep. and brought it about with his justice department, in the United States, uh, t the times they are changing. <laughs> yes, they are. So uh, fear not for the United Methodist Church. It's not going to be united anymore. <laughs> but no, but um, no, but we're temporarily homeless. And so. I'm going to be really interested to see just how long that uh, Southern white biblical literalist, conveniently biblical literalist uh, group mm -hmm. of churches continues to support the African churches and how the power structure of that works out. Because now uh, if all of the LGBTQ supporting churches leave, mm -hmm. the white American churches, I think are going to be in the minority. Yes. And that means, okay, we're going to move general conference over to Nigeria. You know, mm -hmm. are we going to move it? So that general conference is now held in Africa. What are those churches going to think about that? I can't speak for them. I won't speak for them. So, uh, but mm -hmm. not only will general, the position of where general conference is, but where resources go is going to start being a fight and it's going to happen sooner than they think it is. So, uh, and this has been a long time. Had, they've been trying to find uh, common ground and there isn't common ground. When, no. if you're going to say, if There's you're going to say your marriage is illegitimate because God said so, uh, because I have this book that says God said so, and all the other it's, things in this book don't matter to me in my personal life, but it's going to matter to how I interpret your personal life. You can't, you can't, you cannot you have, can't a have a compromise. There's no way to compromise with that. With no. that. Well, and if, you're, if your argument is that all Democrats are dirty, sneaky, communist bastards who hate America... Mm -hmm. And anything you do to destroy them is legitimate because they're the they're the real enemy. Yeah. There's no point in having a conversation yep. at all. There's no there's no point. There's no you, and you can overlap a little bit on a local issue. You can overlap a little bit on criminal justice reform, where you can find a few people you can pick off. But the Republican Party has been told for decades since you know Newt Gingrich and Rush Limbaugh took it over in the '90s, and and since long before that, that the real enemy is the government. Yeah. And the real stooges of the government are liberals and minorities and women and immigrants and unions. You know, all the same people that the Nazis hated, all the same people that the yep. Stalinists hated. Those are the same people that the Republican Party hates. And there's no – and once you get that in your bones, once that seeps into your bones, you can't find a way out of that because that's yeah. who you are. The, 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 this group of people – are responsible for all the problems in the world. And I believe that as, as thoroughly as I believe scripture. And, and it is just as impossible for me to stop believing that as it is impossible for me to stop believing in Jesus. And so compromise simply stops being possible. You keep saying it's going to be possible. You keep suckering people in. That's what Mitch McConnell does all the time. And you keep talking to only your own people who have a good laugh every time you rip off a Supreme Court seat in the name of mm -hmm. fairness. Uh, and it's really time that we on the left figured out we are in the middle of a civil war, we're losing, and we need to get our shit together and stop pretending the people who want to hold our hands in the dark and knife us in the, in the daylight are not our friends. I don't think we're losing, though, Drift Glass. I think the panic well, that you see in the House Republicans uh, is real. And I, those very loud noises they were making are a sign that they're not winning. I don't think people on our side understand how far the Republican Party will That's go true. to hang on to That's power. That's true. And, and there, is such, there is such idea. a tension. And this is, this is illustrated in the battle of the United Methodist Church and why it took so long, which is there is such a penchant on our side for peacemaking. 
that we don't right. get it that we don't get that we're in a we're in a gun battle and not a knife fight and uh yeah. and and why is why is donald trump in, in just humiliate himself by wallowing in kim jong un's shit today mm-hmm. yesterday to distract from a hearing right i'm willing to give a spotlight to the world's most murderous dictator twice in a year mm-hmm. because it momentarily distracts from my problems with crime and adultery <laughs> and treason at home. And I'm willing to sell, I'm willing to tear this place down and sell it off piece by piece to keep my job. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. I don't think, I really don't think liberals understand just how incredibly bad Republicans are willing to make things in this country to hang on to power. Um, and I really think we need to prepare ourselves for that reality. Uh, it's going to be long and hard and very unpleasant. Uh, but we do ultimately have demographics and justice and facts on our side. But we just have to remember, every time you let someone pretend that their past never happened, you're letting them off the hook and you're giving them permission to fuck you over again. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, if just mm-hmm. you know, All you have to do is admit you did it. All you have to do. But if they won't do it, that means they have a different agenda than your well-being and mine. So don't be taken in. Um, you want to talk about my special research project? Yes, go right ahead. Uh, March 22nd, uh, an important event is happening in Springfield that I'll be attending. Uh, Stormy Daniels, the adult film star who's receiving uh, payments, I'm reading this out of the State Journal Register, um, will appear at the Deja Vu Showgirls Nightclub at 3220 Lake <laughs> Lake Drive in Springfield on March 22nd. She'll be doing a book signing at Deja Vu at 3 p.m. Her memoir, full disclosure, will be published, uh, was published in 2018. She'll be performing at the nightclub at 11 p.m. Lord. So just letting you know we're going to have some more specialized deductions uh, <laughs> for our podcast <laughs> in the coming months. Uh, I Mostly in singles, I'm guessing. Uh-huh. Um, uh, I will try to get a receipt. I don't think they give those receipts. Oh, uh, she, uh, this is the This is the one that cracked me up. Um, she will, earlier in the day, she will take part in a protest against live adult entertainment facility Sur- surcharge act, a sin tax that was enacted in 2014. So there'll be a protest march uh, of strippers, apparently. And that's always fun. That's, so, I love it when the strippers march. Yeah. I do. It certainly is camera friendly. <laughs> um, and so you're going finally, to the book signing, are you? Uh, yeah, I'm, I, I'm going for the stories. I only read it for the stories, honey. I uh-huh. only go... Uh-huh. Here we go for the literature. Okay. Uh, I just thought you'd find that hilarious. I do find uh, that by the hilarious. Way, I do not and 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 never have frequented strip clubs. I will confess that there were a couple uh, in my youth when I thought I was a writer. I knew some people that worked there and I would go and hang out after they turned the lights on. Oh. Because I wanted to soak up the atmosphere, sort of the lonely, desperate sick girls on the floor. Again, it was a research project. I it got really it. It really was. I got it. I'd, I'd sit at the bar and I'd, I'd nurse uh, a beer and jot my notes about what sort of it looked like after the lights went up and the cops showed up to take their girlfriends home. Yeah, that, and that's sort the of truth. The, yep. the janitors would come out and sweep the place down. And that's, you know, and it was a very specific vibe. And I thought that was, I found that really interesting and kind of tragic and beautiful. So, Well, Deja Vu has a, uh, I don't know if you know this, they have an amateur night. So I could go and do research as well. Why, why would I know that, Blue Gal? Why would I know that? <laughs> Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't want to go to amateur night at Deja Vu. No, I've got no. I've got better things to do with my time. I've got better <laughs> things going on at home than anything they have on offer at Deja Thank Vu. Thank you very much. Mm-hmm. Let's do a news roundup, shall we? You, you don't want to hear true detective finale theorizing? I want everyone to go to Drift Glass's blog and read the long post he wrote about all his theories on true detective. They're very interesting. I'll, I'll make it very short. The entire series was Amelia's second novel. There you go. There. Boom, done. And that's just saved 8,000 words, right? (laughs) In what has become an annual event, Donald Trump once again humiliated himself and raised the profile of the worst tyrant in the world. And really, people are starving and suffering and being tortured in North Korea. That's another Mm -hmm. statement of how how did we get past this? How did we miss Mm -hmm. this story? He is the worst tyrant in the world. Donald Trump went to Vietnam to give North Korean mass murderer Kim Jong-un a public job. Their tryst abruptly collapsed after Kim Jong-un wiped his... This is too much. 
<laughs> I'll read I it. Thank you very read much. This. <laughs> Their trust abruptly collapsed when Kim Jong Un wiped his <laughs> on Trump's chin and said there would once again be no reciprocity. <laughs> He then laughed, slapped twenty dollars on Trump's nightstand, and said he was late for a meeting and left. And that's how he treated him. He treated him like a twenty dollar hooker. Uh -huh. And Donald Trump flew halfway around the world visiting Vietnam for the first time. You know, Commander Bone Spurs. Apparently, those are all cleared up uh, to be slapped in the face by the worst person in the world, and 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 then say, I don't know. I take his word for it that he didn't uh, murder Otto Warmbier. Uh, you know, he said. It, he didn't. Now, this is the part I, I did miss. He didn't say he said it strongly and powerfully because that's that. Those are the happy words he reserved for Vladimir Putin when he lies. Right, right. I know Kim Jong Un didn't wear his glasses. No, why would he? You know, after after Trump made fun of people with glasses before he left. Well, why would he want to look at that face more than necessary? True, you know? true. It's just I, right. I dragged the president of the United States to my country, took a dump on him, and I'm sending him home empty-handed. Guess who the powerful one is in this relationship? Right. The White House banned four U.S. journalists from covering Trump's dinner with North Korean dictator Kim Jong-un after they shouted questions at Kim Jong-un earlier in the day. Now, there's a whole bunch of stuff in this week's Benghazi Benghazi congressional co-conspirators uh, freak out at the actual oversight committee being oversight work being done by congressional Democrats. First of all, there was a screaming about the boxes. I thought that was hilarious. Where are the boxes? Uh, there are no boxes. Where are they? The FBI. I want to know where the boxes are. Uh, second, Michael Cohen's a liar. He's a liar. Yes, I know, sir. I just said I was a liar. My opening testimony is a half an hour of me calling myself. But you're a liar. You're a liar. Uh, he also wants a book deal, uh, and that's apparently disqualifying. Uh, it is apparently racist to call racists racist, which is difficult to say and even more difficult to believe. Uh, Michael Cohen claimed that Donald Trump asked him to threaten people, quote, probably 500 different people. And entities over a decade. And by threaten, it means call them up, threaten them with lawsuits, because that's what fixers and thugs do. Uh, during the public testimony before the House Oversight Committee, Cohen accused Trump of criminal conduct while in office. And it's pretty clear that he's a criminal, committed crimes while in office, and that's perfectly okay with the Republican Party. Cohen said Trump knew that Roger Stone was communicating with WikiLeaks during the 2016 election and had advanced knowledge that WikiLeaks planned to publish the hacked Democratic National Committee newsletter, or emails, rather. Stolen. Uh, so, stolen email. Stolen. Yep. Stolen. Um, Cohen also said that federal prosecutors in New York are investigating an unspecified crime. This is a brand new crime that we're not aware of yet, involving Trump, that has not been made public yet. So more crimes, more crimes, more crimes. Again, how do you close down a hearing when the criminal involved keeps committing more crimes? It's tricky. Um, Cohen provided... For public consumption, a copy of the $35,000 check that was personally signed by Donald Trump in 2017 to reimburse him for paying off Stormy Daniels. Donald Trump is a criminal and should not be in the White House one more day. And the fact that he's a criminal and a traitor and a slanderer and a racist and a lunatic and an asshole and a liar, liar, liar is perfectly okay with the Republican Party. That's not a bug. That's a feature. Paul Manafort repeatedly and brazenly broke the law, and crimes he engaged in while on bail were not minor. They went to the heart of the criminal justice system, unquote, according to Robert Mueller's 800-page court filing. But apparently Manafort still has enough money to pay lawyers to try to prevent him from going to prison for the rest of his life. I don't think that's going to happen. Uh, the House Judiciary Committee is looking into whether Matthew Sweaty Whitaker may have perjured himself when he testified to Congress. Spoiler, he did. Uh, but I'll say that allegedly since, you know, you got to say things like that, even though it's pretty clear that he did. Meanwhile, along the U.S.-Mexico border, a bipartisan group of 58 former national security officials will issue a joint statement denouncing Trump's national emergency declaration. There is no factual basis for Trump to proclaim a national emergency in order to build his border wall, according to these officials. The governor of New Mexico says she withdrew border troops because there was no real emergency. So did the governor of Wisconsin, Evers. Yes, he withdrew yeah. his troops as well. Trump is assembling his own climate change denial tobacco institute out of corrupt hacks, coal executives, and discredited quote-unquote scientists. So expect lots of email from Crazy Uncle Liberty under their byline in the future. A House committee voted to subpoena Trump administration officials over family separation at the southern border. This is what oversight looks like. Trump's boss in Moscow aired a list of U.S. military facilities that Moscow would target in the event of a nuclear war. 
and noted that Russia is developing hypersonic missiles that would be able to hit those targets in less than five minutes. Not yeah. everybody believes Vladimir Putin on that one. No. Uh, and part of the end of the Cold War was agreeing not to target each other. Right. So this is a direct in your face, saber rattling threat. So I'm sure Donald Trump will roll over and, you know. He said it very strongly that he wanted to nuke New York City. You know, it was very strong and He's powerful. He's so strong yeah. and powerful. I don't, I don't, what can I do? I'm taking his word. Maybe New York needs to be nuked. I don't know. He's a very powerful man. The average tax refund this year is down 17%. So thanks, Obama. The Oscars came and went, and we're kind of with Spike Lee on the whole Green Book thing. But Spike Lee said uh, we should all care about each other and mobilize, and Donald Trump said that was a racist attack on him. Yeah. Uh, the Oscars, I'm also with Spike Lee in that I'm going to sit here and sip champagne and not say a damn word. So. <laughs> um, GOP donors are reportedly worried that Donald Trump doesn't have a strategy to win re-election. But he does. He does. And and his strategy is he's going to host a 4th of July salute to America at the Lincoln Memorial complete with fireworks. That's his strategy. And with, and with your favorite president, a speech by your favorite president. Yep, a speech by your favorite president. I hate to break it to you. My favorite president is buried three miles away from my house, so I don't know how they're going to work that, yeah, but yeah. I wish them all the luck in the world. They're going to somehow animate Lincoln at the Lincoln Memorial. And so far, the Department of Agriculture has made $7.7 .7 billion in welfare payments to farmers screwed by Trump's trade war with China. Each week, we post to our Facebook page and website an internet kitty sent in by you, the listeners. This week's Internet Kitty, however, is a dog. We have a wire fox terrier named Avery. Avery will jump six feet in the air to catch a balloon. You can see a picture of Avery in action at our website and Facebook page. You can send your Internet Kitty or other pet to us at our email address, proleftpodcast at gmail.com, where you can also write to both of us. Feel free to write us. We love hearing from you. Be aware that if you write us at any of our addresses, we reserve the right to read your email or U.S. Postal Service. Go Postal Unions. Letter on the air unless you say otherwise. Don't forget our gourmet coffee guideline. If you can afford to buy an espresso-based beverage for yourself, buy one for us. This is not charity. This is our job, and we do appreciate your $5 donations or more. Approximately 1% of our listeners support this podcast with a contribution, and you can too. See our website, proleftpod.com, for details. Both our PayPal and postal address information is there at proleftpod.com. Please share our show on Facebook or Twitter, and thank you for doing that. Hey, Driftglass, how are the Internet Kitties doing this week? Well, Blue Gal, due to an ongoing investigation by the Southern District of New York, the Internet Kitties cannot comment on that subject at this time. Let's think about living. Think about living. Let's think about loving. Think about loving. Let's think about the hooping and the humping and the bopping and the loving, loving, loving. Let's forget about the whining and the crying, the shooting and the dying, and the fellow with a switchblade knife. Let's think about living. Let's think about life. The Professional Left Podcast is recorded under a Creative Commons license. Copyright 2018.